Okay, so what do you do when your client won't buy? Very often, we're not qualifying the reason why they don't buy. And Zig Ziglar basically has created the five reasons the client won't buy. So I'm going to give you his reasons and they, they give you my additional insight or thoughts into those reasons. So the first one is a client has no need. Obviously, if they don't have a need for insurance, they're not going to buy. They're not going to make a purchase. And we can waste a ton of time if they don't have a need and hang up disappointed. Second thing is they may not have money. <clears throat> We've encountered people like that where they just can't afford it. Or at least they tell us we can't afford it because part of the importance of this is qualifying the client and building value because people very often seem to have the money for what they want, right? All of us have probably bought something because we wanted it, whether or not we really could afford it or really had the budget for it because it's something we either needed or wanted. There are impulse buys happen all the time. So that's a part of the challenge in sales is you need to really understand that. Do they really have money? Do they not? So, But that is a valid reason why they won't buy is no money. Another one is there's no urgency. <clears throat> he phrases it as no hurry, and I'm doing this verbatim from Zig's um, outline, but I would call it no sense of urgency. They're not in a hurry. And I, you may recall if you've been on these sessions very often that I had an agent say, hey, man, I got to the end of a presentation. And they said, oh, but I don't need this for a few months. So there was no hurry to buy. But they didn't ask, when do you need this to start? Meaning there was a, uh, a, 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 an improvement needed in their presentation, in the sales presentation. So they could have avoided that. So that's part of it. Like these are valid reasons. But our job as a salesperson and a professional is to figure out how these will interact with when we're going to present to a customer. If we're going to be able to close that sale, if we really should invest our time right now into that client, because if right off the bat, you said to a client, when do you need this? And they say, oh, I don't need it for 90 days. You probably want to call that person back two months later to get them set up so they're properly prepared in 90 days, but maintain contact with them. So one of the reasons the client won't buy is no hurry. Next thing is no desire, <clears throat> meaning they just don't have a desire to buy. Now, I think if you encounter someone like that, it's probably a reason in that you're maybe calling the wrong target market. You might be cold calling, and that's what happens. You'll find someone who has no desire, and it's very tough to turn that around. Fifth thing is no trust. Now, a lot of people don't take a lot of time on the phone, and that's what's going to happen. It'll be very challenging to develop trust. Face to face, it's a lot easier to build trust. And it's easy to build trust over the phone. You just have to want to input the time. In fact, think of that as a comparison. If you went to someone's home and you were going to present them insurance, would you try to be in and out in about 10 or 15 minutes? No, absolutely not. However, me being a trainer prior to coming to AACP, I have encountered so many people that say, oh, they want the phone call to be about 10 minutes, 15 minutes long, and they want to get off the phone. You would never do that if you were at someone's house. It would be incredibly rude. You wouldn't be able to cover everything. So why take that mentality if you're selling over the phone and you need to develop trust? Because if someone doesn't trust you, they absolutely will not buy. So now, let's talk about qualifying. Because every one of these, you need to qualify, right? <clears throat> someone has no need for this. You're calling and wasting your time, meaning you didn't qualify, let's say, the lead source that someone was looking for insurance, and they have absolutely no need for it. I think this is part of the reason people, when they call, they don't leave a voicemail message because they realize I'm kind of shooting in the dark and I'm not really qualifying my clients properly <clears throat> or qual qualifying the demographic of my client base. So if you start to encounter when you start to think about why you may not be closing sales, you want to start to think about, well, do my clients have a need for this. Am I calling the right people? Am I getting the right leads? Um, am I really networking with the right people to get the clients that have a need for what I'm offering? Now, another thing, if you're not qualifying on money or if you're assuming that people are broke and just showing them the cheapest plan, that can work against you because if someone doesn't have any money, it's going to be tough to sell to them. In fact, I remember I had someone who had a woman in her 
30s or 40s, had two children. I asked her if she had any budget in mind for the insurance. She said about $20. And I literally said, well, I would really recommend buying a Bible and praying because you're not going to get anything in that price range. Is that really the most you can come up with? And she laughed at the reference. And then she said, well, I haven't really sat down and figured it out, but maybe I could, or maybe I can just put my children on a policy. And that's what we ended up doing. So she wound up having a little more money and we did a couple of child only policies. <clears throat> well, one child only policy at the time. Uh, so again, are you qualifying when you run into these challenges If someone flat out says, oh, I don't have the money for that. Do you work with them to try and figure out if they do? Because if they don't have the money now and they end up in the hospital and they don't get insured, they're not going to have any money after that. So you really do have to try and get someone's mental perspective to shift to where they might be able to find the money. Another one is no hurry, <clears throat> as in no urgency, like the example I gave before. This, again, is qualifying up front in your presentation in the needs analysis as to, hey, when, when do you want this to start? Because a lot of people, if they're uninsured, they want it to start right away. If they're insured and they got a rate increase, they want it to start right away because they don't want to be paying more than they've been paying. Now, of course, in Medicare sales, you are more likely to be able to switch people throughout the year if it's not a Medicare advantage. And during the year, if someone is paying too much, of course, they would have to wait <clears throat> on the health insurance side of things. So I'm sure you guys can all put the pieces together depending on what your market is specifically. Next thing, no desire. <clears throat> I'm not sure you would be on the phone with someone longer than 90 seconds if they had no desire. So if you are staying on the phone and trying to push and pull and convince someone and create desire, it's very challenging and you may not be investing your time properly. So what you really want to do is, again, qualify that someone has the desire, they have the need, they have the money, and they don't necessarily have to be in a hurry, but that you're not wasting any of your time. This one's big. No trust for me is related to whether or not you are an expert and whether you give great service. And this Wednesday's topic is how service or sales is actually service. Um, and if you don't develop the trust in the client, they are not going to hand over their pocketbook, their wallet, their credit card, their checking account. <clears throat> they may not even want to reveal any of the things that you need to know to run, run quotes. It really can be that much of a challenge if someone doesn't trust you. And this is probably the only one that doesn't come down to qualifying. It comes down to you being qualified as a professional, as an expert, as someone who's going to offer value, know your stuff, educate the consumer so that they can trust you with their health, their finances, because that's really as big as it is. They're going to put their medical care in your hands. And it's a big responsibility. So if you don't feel that you're at the point where you know enough about the products, about you know how they will fit with the customer, about building the benefits package, these are the things that you have to choose to work on. Uh, oh, I want to add one more thing. Open enrollment. Open enrollment eliminates a lot of the cases where there's no money because we have a subsidy for a lot of people. Open enrollment eliminates the no desire because there is a sense of urgency. As everyone knows, the final two weeks of open enrollment is madness. So that eliminates that. And then, of course, the no need. They have a need for it because they have to change their plan then and there. So think about that. In the insurance market, as a career in sales, Three out of the five reasons client won't buy, clients won't buy, are basically eliminated to a certain extent. So that only leaves no desire, no trust. So we really have to make sure we target people that have the desire, be an expert to develop that trust, and you will really rock, rock this career. Because I've told people very often, I came from cold calling. And when I got into insurance sales, because I had a skill set in selling, I then had to add the product knowledge to it and learn the technology of online submissions and web sharing and things like that. 
But because people, I was able to buy leads and because people were looking for insurance, it was the easiest sale I've ever done because they wanted it. They had a need, they had the desire. And I was just really, you know, knocking on a hundred doors with vacuums or we went to a trade show last week. I would call someone, cold call them to buy a booth when I worked in trade shows and did sales in that realm. So this is really a, the most simple sale. If you put the components properly in place, 